It's Michael Burke. Here is Sabino. It's Russell Howard. And their team captain, Lee Mack. And facing them tonight, dancing with the stars, it's Anton Dubeck. Propping up the bar, it's Danny Baker. And their team captain, David Mitchell. But first, ignore local planning permission and raise the roof for your host, Angus Deaton. Good evening and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show in which our guests are called upon to lie and deceive deliberately, despite none of them having the necessary political or journalistic training. In some ways, uh, lies are like Take That. They come in all shapes and sizes, but like Take That, they can also come back and haunt us years later. <laughs> and lying is the number one reason that relationships fail, that and putting a delicate wool wash on at 60 degrees. And it has been known for suspected liars to have to prove their innocence by carrying a red-hot iron bar in their bare hands for nine paces. But enough about round two. Let's concentrate on our first round, Home Truths, in which panellists read out a statement from the cards in front of them, and the opposing team seek to establish whether it's the truth or a filthy lie. As ever, they'd like me to point out they've no idea what's written on the cards at this moment, by which I think they mean don't blame them if they cock it up. <laughs> Anton has been chosen as the first to boldly go. I recently helped Bruce Forsyth hang a picture in his bathroom. <laughs> what, what was it a picture of? It was uh, a picture of everybody in uh, this year's series of Strictly Come Dancing. Sorry. All the contestants, all the pros, uh, all the judges, and Bruce and Tess. Did you do the adjustments and he was just stood behind going, Hiya. <laughs> <laughs> the producers are, of the show had this and they asked me if I would drop it round. So I took it along and I hung it in his bathroom for it, then we popped off and had a round of golf. What's Bruce Forsyth's bathroom actually like? Well, quite large, really. I mean, it's not dissimilar to this area here. It's... Well, the whole... It's... Angus Deaton yeah. sitting on the toilet! <laughs> <laughs> the thing about all bathrooms, I mean, well, all the bathrooms I've been in, there is actually... There's never usually a big space for a picture, is there? used to tend to be, like, lots of mirrors and cabinets. And I'm picturing Brucey having lots of cabinets full of... lotions. Yeah. <laughs> for the barmit, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, just, just varnish. What's up? <laughs> I can't listen to this any longer. <laughs> this is Bruce Forsyth you're talking about. This is whereabouts is the house. Just give us the rough area. We don't want another street or the Well, number. it's uh, over by uh, Wentworth. By Wentworth, is it? The golf club. Okay. Is, it, is it tastefully furnished? It's beautifully furnished. Well, it bloody it? sounds tacky to me, what you've described so far. <laughs> He's got a picture of himself in the bathroom going... <laughs> <laughs> Lee's team. What do you think, Michael? Some <laughs> kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Turn him to kill him. It was straight. <laughs> um, well, I, I, what do you think, Russell? I, th I think it's a lie. I, I suspect it's a lie. I think Russell. it's a lie. A lie. Yeah. They're all unanimously saying lie, so Anton, reveal all. Well, alas, it's a lie. Ah. It is a lie. Ooh. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm fired. <laughs> Yep, it is a lie. Uh, Anton did not help Bruce Forsyth hang a picture in his bathroom. Bruce only has one picture in his house, and that's a painting in the loft that remains youthful whilst Bruce gets older and older. <laughs> uh, so, Russell, your astounding fact, please. I was Argos Nationwide Employee of the Year 1997. <laughs> a few people applauding. Congratulations, yeah. Russell. <laughs> and how long were you an employee of Argos? I was there for three years. How old were you at the time? I was 17 in 1997. Right. Uh -huh. so, what, what do you think you were particularly good at? Why do you think you won the award? Uh, just going, yes, I'll get that for you, and getting it. <laughs> <laughs> you were national employee. Apparently there was, there was, yeah. So was... there must have been some sort of, with a rounds and a final, I mean, how, how did they, how did they analyse that your, your performance was so much better than, than the, your uh, it was, Do you know how they do it? It was an Argos factor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Simon Cowell going, you're rubbish! <laughs> what's, what's sad about it is that each store puts forward their kind of young employee of the year and then yeah. they have a mystery shopper come round and you, you sort of know the time period they're going to arrive so you're kind of on your toes, you know, making but sure... Again, just, right. just there, yeah. just one yeah. customer. So were you at school for some of that? It was a college. Yeah, oh, right, so it was like a part-time job. For yeah. Some, yeah. Yeah. So the employee of the year was part-time. Part -time. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> on the basis good. that he's not there long enough to oh. do as many fuck-ups as anybody else. <laughs> I have to say, the thing that... I, I wasn't buying it at all, but the sending a mystery shop around... <laughs> that <laughs> actually seems... that seems like quite a plausible system. It seems plausible. Yeah, but... It, but you, um, you seem quite pleased with that yourself. So you think it's a lie? I'm suspecting it's a lie. Well, I'm going to go with my team and You're say it's a lie. It's a lie. OK, it's Russell? Right. It's a lie. <laughs> Yep, it's a lie. Russell did not win Argos Nationwide Employee of the Year, 1997. <laughs> uh, strangely, the one thing they don't sell in Argos is really short pens. <laughs> uh, Michael, you're next up. I used to share a house with Sue Lawley. All right. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where, where, what, what period of your career was this? Oh, very early on. Very right. Early on. You were just housemates. You weren't in a relationship. That's a rather intrusive question, isn't it? Well, I, I mean, you don't have to answer it. Well, no, but no, no, but no, it would be, I think the answer would interest people. Well, I, particularly if it's I yes. Need, yes. <laughs> no, I, I need to clarify this. We were in the same house, but not in the same relationship. Right. Okay. I was frightened to death of her, actually. And were, you, were you the only two? Uh, no, 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 uh, there were several other people. Other newsreaders. Uh, <laughs> Trevor McDonald. <laughs> Every time the chime went to 10 o'clock, they all looked at like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was um, in Cardiff. And the house number? Uh, I can't remember, I'm afraid. Oh. Do you remember all your house oh. Oh. I'm trying to be honest here. I think the phrase, I'm trying to be honest here, could be overused in this game. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we, uh, but, um, so why were you and Sue Lawley both based in Cardiff? We were both trainee reporters on the same newspaper. Uh, which newspaper? It was the South Wales, South Wales Echo. Can I ask, if we produce Sue now, and we're not going to, and we said, what is the one big story that both of you would say, yeah, yeah. classic night, what would it have been? No, actually, I seem to remember that, um, uh, that somebody caught a sturgeon. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Somebody caught a sturgeon in the Bristol yeah. Channel. Whoever it was gave it to the newspaper, uh, and, uh, and Sue cooked it for dinner at the house. And we all had oh, a dinner no. party eating this sturgeon. Well, why did you well, get we it? Well, we were working on the newspaper, you see, and whoever wanted publicity or so. I don't remember. It's a long time ago. Come on. Well, what? it's sturgeon night. I mean, I remember <laughs> the details of every sturgeon-based anecdote in my armoury. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, yes. I, I don't thinking? know. It was the door number thing that threw me. Knowing this story <laughs> might be in the offing. <laughs> well, what do you think? Well, I tell you, a year and a half with Sue Lawley and nothing went on. You, you, you well, can't believe that. I can't believe it, I'm afraid. You think yeah. she'd have jumped him at some stage? Uh, something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll. I'll, I'll yeah. Yeah, I'm going so we, <laughs> we, think, we think it's a lie. They're saying it is a lie. Michael, time to come clean. It's all true. <laughs> it's all <absolutely> true. <laughs> nice work. Yes, it was, uh, it was true. Uh, Michael did uh, once share a house with Sue Lawley. Uh, they used to sit down together to watch 9 o'clock news, and if there was a long pause at the top of the show, one of them would realise they were in the wrong place. <laughs> and so, with all the vitality of a taxidermist display cabinet, we come to round two, Ring of Truth. It's my job to furnish the panellists with some celebrity facts, and it's their job to establish whether or not those facts are true. First, those dreaded words, it's Alan Titchmarsh. <laughs> Wonderful thing to be a healthy grown up busy busy bee. Toying with the tulips, tasting every type, building up the honeycomb that looks like tripe. I'd like to be a busy little bee, being just as busy as a bee can be. Flying all round the wild hedge row, stinging Jeffrey Smith upon his parson's nose. Bzz, 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 honeybee, honey, bzz, if you like, don't sting me. Bzz, 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 honeybee, honey, bzz, if you like, but don't sting me. <laughs> Is that a proper program? Yeah. <laughs> it was actually broadcast. Yeah, really. Well, it was, yes. it was part of Shit Week. <laughs> <laughs> so here is the related fact: Alan Titchmarsh's waxwork at Madame Two Swords gets kissed so often that it has to have the lipstick washed from its face twice a week. Yeah, but since Alan moved to Scotland, he can only get there once a week, so they don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> um, I don't yeah. believe people rush up and kiss Alan Titchmarsh. Do you reckon he ever just goes there and stands still? <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, the idea that people walk up and kiss the statues rather than have their photo took. However, 
you wouldn't be intimidated by a waxwork of Alan Titchmarsh. I think you mm. would walk up and get matey, probably do that, kiss his cheek. Yes, I, I think there might be something yeah. in this. I also imagine that the people who want to kiss Alan Titchmarsh <laughs> might wear quite a lot of lipstick. You yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> what, what exactly are you saying? <laughs> I was imagining sort of, you know, powdery old ladies with, you know, <laughs> oh, hideously <I> misapplied. <laughs> <laughs> Reeking of lavender and gin. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and mumbling to themselves, busy bee, busy bee, yeah. busy, 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 busy. <laughs> The Queen did say about Alan Titchmarsh, uh, you've given a lot of ladies a lot of pleasure. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, she has got a it, filthy it, sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th I'm, I think I'm moving towards believing this. I'm moving towards believing, believing. I'm saying yes. I, I'll go with you because you are captain. Yes, okay. I, 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 I think it's true. Well, we think it's true. Well, they're saying it's true, and I can tell you it is absolutely true. Oh, oh, God, it's true. <laughs> yes, it is true. Uh, Alan Titchmarsh's waxwork figure uh, does have lipstick washed from its face twice a week. Likewise, the Kylie Minogue figure has to be washed twice a week, ironically by Jason Donovan, who works there part-time as a cleaner. <laughs> also every week, James Blunt's figure has to have the dents beaten out of it. <laughs> And Michael Jackson's waxwork has been melted down and now looks exactly like him. <laughs> so a cursory glance at the score is enough to remind us that it's Lee's team who seem to be holding all the cards, leading as they do, 4-2. Uh, our next round goes by the unfinished title of This Is My, in which Lee's team will each claim to have a connection with our mystery guest, and David's team take it upon themselves to find out who's telling the truth. Three possibilities, two lies, one truth, and no option but to plough on. Uh, this week, no fewer than two guests, so please welcome tonight's uh, special guest people, Chris and Jill. <laughs> So, Russell, what are Chris and Jill to you? Uh, this is Chris and Jill. I interviewed them on my radio show uh, because they claimed that they were abducted by aliens. <laughs> Michael, perhaps you'd like to tell us how you know Chris and Jill. This is Chris and um, J uh, Jill, who are... <laughs> <laughs> who are um, fellow members of the Guildford Walking and Dining Club. And finally, Lee, your relationship with Chris and Jill. This is Chris and Jill. They once helped me dispose of a dead body after I killed a man in a car park. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, just trying to add a bit of spice to proceedings. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is Chris and Jill, and right. uh, I once slept in a shed for a whole summer. So there you have it, some abducted radio fans, according to Russell, some rambling diners, according to Michael, or Lee's personal shed landlords. David. This absurdity about uh, alien abduction. Well, they claimed it. That's why we interviewed them. What was the story they told you? Um, we read it in the Autumn Gazette and then we interviewed them because apparently they, they met some guy called Zargon, I think. This is about a year ago. And Zargon, won Zargon. he was upset. No, Zargon. 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 It's their story I'm relating it, Joe yeah, okay. And the, the It may be their story you're relating it, but it, but it, but it may also story. be bullshit you're thinking no, up now. No, so, no, 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 no. Zargon no. work at Argon. No, he doesn't. <laughs> But this is where it gets very, very bizarre because Zargon started asking her what this was, pointing at a wheelie bin. And Jill had to explain what a wheelie bin was, which she did very well. And then they woke up, they woke up in a skip the next day. <laughs> where, did he, where did they meet Zargon? I did suggest that maybe they got drunk and woken up at a fancy dress party, yeah. but uh, they, they declined that. Apparently they went to his ship, which looked a bit like, and I quote, uh, a Yates' wine lodge, but full of aliens. <laughs> Where were they when the ship abducted them? Just outside Coventry. <laughs> were, were, they, were they in the car? They were briefly in the car before they were sucked out of it. <laughs> so they're driving the car, they get sucked out of their car. Yeah. They're thinking, what the hell's going on? The car is rudderless, carrying on <laughs> the Coventry bypass. So then there they are in the Yates's wine bar with all the other aliens. <laughs> I'm sorry, David, but what part of this story doesn't add up? <laughs> it's their story, and what a story it is. Um, so maybe you'd like to talk to Michael now. Yes. Um, so, uh, 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 again, the, these people you know from... From Guildford. Uh, Chris is the uh, Edmund Hillary of, uh, of the home counties. And, uh, and Jill is the Delia Smith of the outfit. Yeah. And, and it is a, a rambling and dining Walking society. and dining. Guildford, walking and dining. Which, which bit of this don't you understand? <laughs> we can go out for a walk and then we go and dine. 
And you, and you go around someone's house to dine, you don't go to a restaurant? Yes, we do. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So what's happened the, the most recent meeting? Where did you walk? Whose house did you eat at? What did you have? Um, well, it was uh, actually yesterday. Right. Yeah. And where was the walk? Uh, it, was, it was in Surrey, uh, near, near Guildford. It was uh, Leatherhead. Leatherhead. Who was, the, uh, who was hosting the dinner? Zargon. Uh, uh, Zargon, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Not our house, uh, not Chris or Jill's house, but another uh, couple Can in the group. Can you bother to make up the name of two people? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is far too plausible. Yeah, but you haven't, you haven't, mind you haven't even finished the story yet. Go it's on, a big swingers then? thing and they all get together. <laughs> <laughs> they're not blushing, they're not blushing. What was the shed scenario? <laughs> it's a thing really? that poor people have in the garden to put tools in. <laughs> I know what a shed is. Oh, I see. Sorry. Uh, why were you sleeping in a shed? Well, it's a good question, David. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I was, it's when I first came to London, and uh, a friend of mine who lived in London uh, I introduced me to Chris and Jill. I slept in the... In, I rented a room off them, a uh, spare room, and they had renovations done. That's so why I had to leave. And I, I was desperate, and we came up with this ingenious plan where I would sleep in the shed. When you say shed, you mean like a proper one you see in a garden centre, or is this just a, no, this a was, term it was, that covers what it yeah, was? No, it, was, it wasn't uh, it was a proper shed. It wasn't, you know, insulated or, or any of that. It didn't have any electrics, any plumbing or anything. These good people uh, don't look like the kind who would tolerate someone living out in the shed. They look like the kind of people who look at each other and go, we can't have that, we can't have that, we'll put him up at our sissies. Yeah, but you say that, they don't let that look deceive you. I mean, because they also once helped me bury a man that I killed in a shed. There is that. I must say, I'm, I'm finding the most plausible story at the moment to be leave. Absolutely. There are definitely people in the world who think they've been abducted by aliens. Mm. Radio stations certainly would get in touch with them and try and sort of yeah. exploit their We're muddle fantastic headedness. Sunday. Great Sunday. Um, but I think the story would be less... Uh, Insane. Uh, well, sort of, and, and, uh, yeah. it's, it's, their it's their story, don't mock them, they're good people, they just had a tricky I'm, I weekend. I know, I'm in a situation <laughs> where if it turns out it is your story, I have, by, you know, accident, sort of mocked them, yeah. and I apologise for that in advance, if that is the case. However, I don't believe aliens exist, and there's no getting around the fact that if that is the story, I, I think, you, you, you know, you are a bit wrong about that. <laughs> All right, we need an answer, so David's team. Uh, are these people Russell's radio abductees? Are they Michael's rambling dining companions or Lee's shed providers? Anton, what do you reckon? Oh, I think I'm going for Lee's shed. Yeah, I think, I think the shed, because I, I think the rambling somehow. society is obviously very plausible, but it's so very plausible. Well, it, well, yeah, we'll yeah, go with Lee. Lee. Yeah. Right, they're saying it's Lee's. So, uh, well, perhaps Chris and Joe would like to tell us who they really are. We are, in fact, uh, companions of Michael's in walking and dining. Ah. Ah. So congratulations uh, to them. Uh, yes, uh, Chris and Jill are indeed uh, Michael's walking and dining friends. Sometimes reading the news just isn't exciting enough. <laughs> uh, so at the end of that round, uh, well, it appears to be David's team uh, who are struggling to make an impression, trailing as they are, 5-2. Not a moment too soon, we come to the final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. Uh, again, they don't know whether they're going to be reading out a true fact about themselves or a made-up lie that they've never seen before. Uh, plus, they may also be suddenly given a possession in this round, which they will have to claim is theirs and may go some way to explaining the general air of panic. Uh, David's team are behind, so need to get even, not mad, starting with <coughs> Lee. My parents had to change my name to Lee because I couldn't pronounce my real name properly. <laughs> what was your real name? Don't, my make, real, don't make him force My real sorry. name, my real name, I was actually christened Leo. Now, I know what you're thinking, why can't I pronounce Leo? But I was so, I don't know what it was, but I had a slight speech impediment. Well, and, what, uh, what speech impediment? Because each man, you can't say O's. O's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was it, awful. It, Lee could never convey surprise. The thing is, <laughs> I, I had a very... I had a very weird speech impediment. It was, uh, right. I couldn't it's stop. So I used to say, Leo. <laughs> and he used to go on for a long time. So they got a bit sick of it. At what age did they, you know, say, oh, he's never going to learn? <laughs> you know, well, oh, he's two. Was, he can't even say his name. It was about the age of, about the age of, uh, about four, something like that. They, they, because they used to call me Lee anyway. They used to abbreviate Leo. And they said, you know what, let's just leave it at Lee. Well, why would they do that, though, keep it to Lee? Uh, yeah. And why at the, your Maybe if we knock team. off a syllable, he'll stop there. I mean, he might have gone, no. Lee. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> if 
which in a way is worse, is even more boring than Leo. <laughs> Well, P.G. Woodhouse was known as Plum all his life because his name's Pelham, and when he was little he couldn't say, so there is precedent. And you're quite like P.G. Woodhouse in lots of other ways. <laughs> 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 well, I can't buy this because I don't think parents would change... Well, you, no, I, th say, I oh, think at the age of four they'd go, oh, he'll learn, we wanted to call him Leo. So, uh, uh, I, I, I think it's a, a no. We don't believe it. Uh, alas, yeah. uh, alas um, I think Lee is enough. Yeah, we, <laughs> think, we think it's a the, lie. It's a unanimous lie. Mm -hmm. Lee, tell us, truth or lie? It's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is a lie. Uh, Lee's parents did not change his name because he couldn't pronounce his real name properly. It's difficult uh, when you're stuck with an embarrassing name from your parents, uh, which is why Fifi Trixabel Geldof now refers to herself as Fifi Trixabel Smith. <laughs> uh, next, <coughs> Michael. Oh. Uh, it says possession here, so... Open right. your box and tell us what's in it. Ah, here we are. Oh, it's a dead body! <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is an ashtray that I stole from 10 Downing Street. Ah. Oh. <laughs> an audible gasp. Where did you secrete it? I put it in my raincoat pocket, actually, uh, because you, you can get to the cloakroom, um, you know, during the... Whole, I, I'd had, a, I have to say, a couple of drinks, and, uh, and I popped it in the... You know, I've got a raincoat with quite big pockets. They don't, like, they don't search you when you go out. Is there I, anything, anything on it that identifies it as 10 Downing Street? Don't look at it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Which Prime Minister were you uh, stealing Tony it from? Uh, Tony Blair. Oh, oh, sure. oh well, who knows? Oh, forget it. Yeah. Who knows how you could have changed history? Shall we go to war, Sherry, or not? I'll have a cigar and think about it. No ashtray! We'll go to war! <laughs> That's what you did. <laughs> That's the consequences. Are, are you proud of what you did? <laughs> you know, I, I, I do feel very guilty about it. But actually, it <laughs> yes, wasn't... you show it off on stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How would I be if you pie-eyed on a bus, just go, psst. <laughs> it's Tony Blair's, and people go, is it, mate? Is it? <laughs> Have you had it valued? I do like the idea of Michael turning up on the Antique Roadshow and going, yeah. could you value this, Michael? <laughs> it's a wonderful piece. Where did you get it? I robbed it from 10 Downing Street. <laughs> do you normally nick stuff? <laughs> it was. <laughs> Archbishop Tutu, at the end of your interview, said, my cross, it was here, right? <laughs> <laughs> but actually, you are dressed quite like a jewel thief. As <laughs> the lights suddenly go off. What are you thinking, David? What do you think? Well, I'm, I, I, think he, I think it's the truth. I don't, I don't I have to say, it doesn't look to me like it's hugely valuable, but I think it's kind of substantial enough that it could have been in 10 Downing Street. Um, um, David, well, an answer. you think it's true. Well, I think that it's true. You well, think it's... I don't think it's true. It's your uh, right, so, Michael, I, I think it's a lie. <laughs> He's saying it's a lie. Michael, reveal all. It's a lie. Oh, oh, right, it's a lie. Well done, Captain. It's a lie. Michael did not steal an ashtray from 10 Downing Street. He couldn't, as his pockets were too full of the Woolworths pick and mix he'd lifted earlier on. <laughs> uh, next. Mm. Anton. I was a teenage boxer. Ah. But I quit because I had a mouth ulcer. <laughs> Where did you box? In Seven Oaks, where I lived. A school or, or no, a, a in a, in a, club or in a boxing club. What was the club called? It was called Seven Oaks Boxing Club. <laughs> That's very handy. So, what was? Um, are you a boxing fan then? Yes, I am. Still actually. are, yeah. Yeah. So, what can you tell me the, the name of a couple of moves? <laughs> there's you there's that familiar the, the punch. punch. Yeah, there's that familiar <laughs> thing. <laughs> the the right-handed punch. Anton. Hang on, hang on. The right-handed punch, yeah. Anymore? And there's the other one. It's a very nifty move. It's, it's not the left-handed left punch, punch, is it? Yeah. <laughs> what was your boxing nickname? I was Anton the Killer. <laughs> Dubeck. <laughs> Did you at this time have an interest in ballroom dancing? It was about the same time I started ballroom dancing. Wow, the same time? About, I used to do boxing on a Tuesday night and ballroom dancing on a I'll Wednesday night. I'll tell you what, night. those other boxers must have been quaking in their boots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not the ballroom dancer! <laughs> yeah, in fairness, they'd never Absolutely. catch you if you started tangoing around the ring. That was brilliant. <laughs> you just oh. grab hold of them in a clinch and sort of move them oh, round. I'm right. leading! I'm <laughs> leading! <laughs> Who are your boxing heroes? Um, my boxing heroes... Wayne Sleep, Rudolf Nureyev, the whole... <laughs> 
You're quite an all-rounder, weren't you? Because you're good at football as well. I was good at football, yeah. I played for the county. Well, why did you give up that? A Veruca? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've just got an image of you now dancing with one of the celebrities, going like that all suave and going, I get a lot of mouth ulcers, man. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a boy, I grew out of it, really. really? I'm all right now, ladies. So, Lee, <laughs> do you believe Anton? Oh, I reckon that's true. Russell, I think, think it's true. true. Yeah. Okay, well, well, we'll go with true. Okay, they're saying it's true, Anton, gospel or garbage? Anton the killer. Do is true. Ah, it is, is true. true. <laughs> yes, it is. Next. <coughs> Danny. I won a jukebox off Viddy Jones in a game of poker. Where did this take place? It was actually within the BBC. I used to do a football show called 606. And Viddy turned up, and if you know Viddy Jones, you end up either hunting, doing uh, that thing with the uh, clay pigeon shooting, or right. playing cards with him. And uh, so I fell into a game of cards, and I don't play cards very well, but absolutely thrashed him. I've no idea about poker, let me say that. None. Oh, that's and handy I... for this inquisition, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that in quick, didn't I you? Don't, no, no, I don't, I don't, I used to call it well, 21. you must remember the hand that you had when you won, a, you won the, the... Yes, I do remember the hand that I had, what and was it was two it? queens. What did he have that you beat? I've no idea. I cannot remember that. I'd like to say I could. But the fact is, he said, I'll tell you what I'll play for. You like music, don't you? I've had a jukebox given to me for some promotion he was doing. I don't want it. And uh, so he said, I'll have it. And it became a running joke on the show, if any of you remember it. Oh, I do not. remember. I used to listen to the show a lot and don't remember that running joke. <laughs> <laughs> have you still got it? No, I haven't. A brother-in-law has got it in an arch over at Nun Head. What arch are you it's talking about? It's an arch. About? It's their workplace. In railway arches in London, loads of people work in, within them. Well, so it's on the railway track above the arch? No, no, no. In the arch. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever heard the phrase, it's in the arch. Lee, the, the, one of the advantages of language is you don't have to have heard the whole phrase yeah. recently <laughs> to be able to define its meaning. What type of jukebox is it? It's not a Wurlitzer, it's not a Rockola. Is it an Ami 1959 J Selection 200? <laughs> Because that's what I've got. Have you, have you really? Oh, lovely stuff. Yeah, I won it off Paul Gascoigne in the Game of Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Lee, is this sounding plausible? I, I think it's true, but I find Danny so charming, I can listen to him. <laughs> There's a bit of unessential detail there, isn't it? Don't you think? If it was anybody else, I would say it's definitely a lie. But there's something about Danny Baker which stinks of the truth. <laughs> Michael's saying it's a lie, you're saying it's the truth. I'm going to go for uh, age over youth. And uh, I'm going to say that that is, in fact, a lie. OK, they're saying it's a lie. Danny, what is the truth? Well, we could get a cab to Nun Head, and I couldn't show it to you. It's a lie. Yes, it is a lie. Danny did not win a jukebox off Vinnie Jones in a game of poker. Vinnie must be great at poker, since, as proven by all his films he's been in, his face betrays no emotion whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, joyless buzzing sound means at the end of tonight's show, it's Lee's team, who are this week's demigods, having lorded Yay. over David's team 7 6. Oh. <laughs> so, overnight stardom to our winners, instant obscurity for our losers, and we leave you with a reminder that some of the most common lies that people tell are sex related. The three most popular being, I'll still respect you, no, I don't fancy your mother, and yes, of course, I've got the keys to those handcuffs. Good night. <laughs> Friday comedy continues here on BBC One with the street-savvy fighter pilots and the sat-nav that bites back from Armstrong and Miller next. And later, the drunken Scots philosopher in the dirty string vest. The comedy connections of Rab C. Nesbitt at 10.35.